everyone. Welcome to lesson number eight, uh, Made in God's Image. The memory verse is Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Uh, let me see if I can do it. Um, then God said, let us make mankind in our image uh, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them genesis 1 26 27 how did i do okay i think i did okay so uh hey i want to start well first of all let me just say don't forget to um or keep on with the verses but as you're learning the verse for this lesson don't forget um, to review the previous ones remind your group encourage them um, you can't check every verse every week. Um, if you do, we'll continue, but it, it will get time consuming. Uh, so as you add verses, then just do spot checks periodically. Like, hey, let's, you know, what's, uh, the, you know, the third, uh, you know, the verse. Here's the chapter, or here's the topic. What's, what's the verse? So pull that out. Uh, I actually want to start uh, this uh, recap video with the first paragraph from the reading in this chapter. Uh, it says, the um, German philosopher Immanuel Kant loved to take long walks on summer evenings to meditate and think. On one occasion, he was sitting in a park when a policeman noticed that he had been there for several hours. The policeman came up to him and said, what are you doing? Kant answered, I'm thinking. The policeman said, well, who are you? Kant replied, that's precisely the problem I've been thinking about. I mean, who am I? And this lesson is so key for that, that you and I understand and learn and embrace the, the truth, the fact that we are created in God's image. We are created in his image. We are his creation. Um, and when we become followers of Jesus, when we put our, our faith uh, in God, we go from being his creation to his adopted children. Uh, so it's from his creation to his son to his daughter. But we have value. We have um, purpose. We have responsibility as his creation and even more so uh, as his sons and daughters. So let's take a look uh, at this lesson. I want to start in the memory verse study guide and um, highlight a couple questions. Uh, let's see. Number three. Um, God refers to himself in the plural, us and our. What could be the reason for this? Now, there'll be some, there'll be pl plenty of opinions uh, on this. Um, the author in the reading references a, a couple. Um, but let me give you, like, this, this, the simplest uh, response is, well, it's a, a reference to the Trinity, um, you know, based on our understanding in the New Testament of how God has revealed himself. This could be a, a reference to the Trinity. And there's really nothing wrong with that because based on the totality of Scripture, we can look back with our understanding what's revealed in the New Testament and say, yeah, you know, this, this makes sense. But it's probably not Trinity because that concept wasn't revealed in, to the, until the New Testament. And so that would have been foreign to an ancient Israelite um, hearing that. So uh, it's most likely, I'm going to read you a quote uh, from uh, a Bible scholar. His name is Michael Heiser, and I'm going to put a link uh, to a video uh, where he talks about this. Uh, the video begins with, uh, this is going to just be a short video on the topic, and then it's like 35 minutes or so. <laughs> now I'm sure for him that is a short video, uh, but if you're interested, that's a good, a good place to start. So. I'll try to link the video in this video itself. If I can't figure out how to do that, it'll be in the in the notes below. Um, but he said the most likely explanation is that God, the lone speaker, is announcing his intention to create humankind to the members of his heavenly host. Now, that may sound like an odd phrase, heavenly host, but if you look at Psalm 82, uh, Psalm 82 and Psalm, uh, let's see, um, Psalm 82, verse 1, God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment 
among um, the gods. Which is there Psalm 89, verses 5 and following. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too, and the assembly of the holy ones. So, like, who are these holy ones? Could uh, be angelic beings and such. Uh, but when he's saying, hey, let us create mankind uh, in our image, uh, he's not saying, hey, let us do this. Uh, we'll each take a, a part in this as far as to the heavenly host uh, because God singularly is the one doing the, the creating. It would be similar to a parent of young children saying, hey, let's make dinner. And then the parent continues to, to do everything himself or herself. Um, so that's the sense of, hey, let us make mankind in, in our image. So we see that where the father is uh, the originator of the design, but the son, it's the son who carries it out. We saw that uh, in a previous lesson. Um, you know, the author wrote that the father is the architect and Jesus is the builder. So question three has a follow-up. It asks, what does this reveal about what it means to be created in God's image? I wrote, it means we have the ability and the responsibility and authority to create, to evaluate, to equip others, disciple making, and to honor and praise God by valuing him and his creation. So we are God's unique representatives on earth. Uh, question four asks, or says, uh, verse 27 says, humankind is created as male and female. That's an expression of being created in God's image. How is this another clue for how we are created in God's image? So I wrote, God is united, Father, Son, Spirit, and wants us to be united in our relationships. Uh, and that there's no status distinction amongst men and women. We both have unique abilities and roles to fulfill what God has called us to do in overseeing his creation. Uh, let's take a look at the next section, the inductive Bible study guide. Uh, and, and several here. Um, uh, the first question, what does this teach us about God you know, in the beginning, God? And some of the observations that, that I had, you may have others. I said that God is eternal. God is creator. God is creative yet organized. God values diversity and beauty. God has a plan and purpose for all things. God values his creation. Question two, uh, what is the benediction that God pronounces over the created order prior to humankind's uh, coming into being? And it was, it was good. It was good. And then the next one, how does the benediction change with humanity? He says, it was very good. What does this tell us about how God views humanity? That there's a higher value and placement on humanity in terms of our value, our responsibilities, and therefore our expectation. Later in the reading, uh, he has a couple quotes I really like uh, with when he's referencing um, creation, saying um, it is good. The author says, God is having a great time with his creative work. Uh, it's in a sense he's saying, this is coming out just the way I intended. It is good. Uh, but then with the creation of, of mankind, the, uh, the, the formula abruptly changes. And, and so human, he says human beings are the expression of the personal nature of the creator and therefore qualitatively different from the animal world and the rest of creation. Human beings bear the stamp of God. So I like that. Uh, then back to the uh, inductive Bible study guide. So question four, in Genesis 2, man's created prior to woman and he's alone. What's not good about being alone? And um, what I want to highlight here is that we are relational beings who need one another and we need to support one another. Um, I can't emphasize this enough over and over really throughout this reading, throughout this 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 chapter, uh, that is key, that, that we are relational beings. Uh, in fact, see, I had a quote here also from, um, from the reading below. Towards the end of the reading, there's a section that says, clues to the image of God in humans. And uh, he says, the first clue 
to what it means to be created in God's image is that just as God is a being in fellowship, so are we made for relationships. Right? Which leads us to the, the second clue, and he concludes by saying, humankind as male and female is another way of saying that we mirror God in his plurality as humans in plurality. We were created for love relationships, for the vertical love of God, and then the horizontal love with humans. That's why in Matthew 22, 37 to 39, uh, the great commandment is we are to love God and love people. And that's what we are to focus on. Love God, love people. Uh, back to the questions in that section. Number six, this is fun. When God presents the woman to the man, how does the man's exclamation, verse 23, express his fulfillment? I just want to read you a, a, a quote from a commentary. This is the Nelson's New Illustrated Bible Commentary. Uh, uh, the phrase, this is now, means at last. At last. Uh, this is now, bone of my bone. So at last. And then bone of my bones is Adam's wording is poetic and exalted. Uh, he's seeing Eve was a shocking and exhilarating experience because the match was perfect. Here in Eve was a, a mirror of himself. Someone just like him, and yet different. And then uh, she shall be called woman. And giving the woman her name, Adam was functioning as he had in naming the animals. Yet the name that he gave her matched his own. She was woman, and he was man. They were perfectly suited for each other. I love that. At last. And in Genesis uh, 2.24, question 7, the classic biblical definition of marriage, quoted by Jesus and Paul. Uh, so, according to this verse, what are the essentials for a marriage relationship? And then this is um, something I just picked up uh, from some um, pastors and, and Bible teachers uh, in, in the past, uh, that there's three things in these verses that are essentials for a marriage relationship. Uh, number one, there's a public act, right, where they leave. They leave... Um, uh, mother and father. Second, there's a permanent bond where they cleave to one another. And then third, there's a physical em embrace where the two become one flesh. So there's a public act, a permanent bond, and a physical, uh, physical embrace. They leave, they cleave, and the two become one. And then for the reading study guide, I just want to highlight a couple questions. Number four, what are the implications of the biblical view of humans for how we understand the worth of the individual? I said, if all humans are made in the image of God, that means everyone has value and purpose. We cannot put others down or abuse or offend others. Racism is not an option. Uh, and then the follow-up, how might this differ from an evol evolutionary view of humans as higher order animals? And I wrote, an evolutionary view believes that the individual will continue to grow and adapt to be supreme over creation and over other humans. Uh, when I believe the biblical view instead is, uh, we've already been given the authority to rule over creation, but we are to do that in a way that uh, values others as well, works together with, with others. Um, everyone has purpose, everyone has value. so. Uh, we can't put others down. We can't dominate others. Uh, and then question five, and this is one, please don't go th past this one quickly. Really dig into this as a group. If being created in God's image means we are made for relationship, what impact should that have on our priorities or how we measure success in life? That's a great question. So I wrote that I need to make my relationships with family, with friends, and disciple making uh, a priority over temporary things. Uh, there's nothing wrong with enjoying temporary things, but they can't be my priority. I need to make relationships my priority with my family, with my friends, and in disciple making. And then that the follow up, don't skip this one, what needs to change in your priorities? And I, I said, I need to be available to Janine and my girls. I need to continue to invest in our relationship. Uh, and I need to do all I can to pursue health 
in them, in those relationships with Janine and my girls, as well as help them value themselves and their relationships. So it takes some time uh, in that section, and that will be a way to encourage you to, to pray for one another based on those responses. And I just want to uh, highlight in the, the going deeper section, um, uh, uh, he, he references the book Mere Christianity. And if you don't have this book, I encourage you to have it. This is just one of, one of the, the many books that we should have um, on our shelves or on our tablet. Uh, Mere Christianity is a classic. Uh, the good news is it's a, it's a small book, uh, but don't let that deceive you. It's a small book that is uh, thick, and, and so it's not a speed read. Um, you'll have to just think and process. But he, he just mentions two chapters uh, from that, so two limited sections that will give you a taste of the book, but I encourage you at some point to, to go through that book. Um, so there you go. Uh, we are made in God's image. We are his creation and as followers of Jesus, we've been adopted into his family as sons and daughters. So uh, let us uh, love and serve God and, uh, as, and out, out of that healthy relationship, love and serve one another. So have a great lesson.